If you haven't known by now, I prefer power over anything else. And on that note, let's talk about the Flame Blast from Mega Man 6. Now, a fire-based weapon isn't anything new. There have been many fire-based weapons before and after Mega Man 6. Some arguably more effective than the Flame Blast like Solar Man's Solar Blade and Torch Man's Blazing Torch. But there are weapons in Mega Man 10 and 11 I like better than those two, but you'll see what they are later. For now, let's talk about the Flame Blast. While Mega Man 6 weapon selection was pretty okay to be honest, there are still several weapons that burn just as bright as an oil lamp, and the Flame Blast honestly burns the brightest to me. Again, no pun intended. As I hinted at before, this weapon is insanely strong, but what do you expect? It's fire! It's not blue fire granted, but still! Considering how many enemies die easily from it, it really shows just how dangerous fire is to even the bulkiest of robots. Then again, all robots are made out of metal, and fire melts metal, so it would make sense as to why the flame blast is so strong to everything it touches in Mega Man 6. Seriously, fire has to be the number one thing that robots fear the most. Well, that, and a certain psychotic mutant in the world of X-Men. Sure, it may go in an arc, meaning if you want to successfully kill an enemy with it, you have to be close to it. Oh well, I don't really have a problem with close range combat in Mega Man anyways. Okay, most of the time, but still. The Flame Blast is a very good and very strong special weapon. It is one of the best that Mega Man has ever gone, so Flame Man, I take my hat off to you. Or should I say Turban since you're made in India. Going back to my original Double Top 5 for a moment, I put the Flash Stopper and the Drill Bomb from Mega Man 4 in a tie. But the more I think about it... The Flash Stopper is the more effective weapon here. Sure, the Drill Bomb is too spectacular with its explosion, but there's another weapon further down this list with a more spectacular explosion. Even though I do prefer Drill Man over Bright Man, the latter has a better weapon. Like I said in my original Double Top 5, this weapon is essentially a ripoff of the Time Stopper from the second game, only good. In fact, to prove my point, I ain't going to spend the rest of the entry telling you guys what the Time Stopper did wrong and what the Flash Stopper did right. You're all saying comfortably? Good. Because I'm ready to tell you guys the Time Stopper's first problem. Okay, for those who have seen both versions of my War Special Weapons list, then you will know that I did not like the Time Stopper because once it's used, you cannot attack. With the Flash Stopper on the other hand, once you use it, you can still attack. Granted, you can only fire your standard lemon-shaped buster shots, but still, it's still better than doing nothing but wait until the weapon wears off. Which leads to my second problem with the Time Stopper. The fact you can only use it once. And why is that? That's because when you use a time stopper, the energy gain slowly decreases until it hits zero. During that time, you cannot attack or even switch weapons. The flash stopper can be used 7 times. Granted, another weapon that appeared on both versions of my worthless can also be used 7 times, but instead of a worthless shield based weapon that you cannot throw, the flash stopper has you freezing every enemy in the stage in their tracks. Granted, you cannot switch weapons while the flash stopper is active either and it doesn't last very long, but it's still a must if you want to evade certain obstacles like the rock shoots in Drew Man stage or the ups and downs in Dust Man stage. Eat your heart out, Skull Barrier. Last problem with the Time Stopper, Quick Man is the only thing this weapon kills in Mega Man 2, and yet it can only take away half his health. That is not the case with the Flash Stopper and Pharaoh Man because he can be defeated before the Flash Stopper's ammo can run dry. If you're fast enough, that is. So there you go, the Flash Stopper is essentially what the Time Stopper should have been in Mega Man 2. I don't think there's any need for me to further prolong this entry. Once again going back to my original Double Top 5, let's briefly talk about what was number 1 on the best list, the Remote Mine. While I admit this number 1 choice was random, it's still a pretty good weapon to use. Aside from the fact that this weapon's explosion would be perfect for a live action Transformers movie, like the Dower Attack, pressing up and or down on the D-pad will cause the mine to ascend or descend respectively, though the weapon will still fly forward. However, what do you get when you combine the destructive nature of the remote mine with everything that made the Dower Attack so practical but more as well as adding a bit of the crash bomb from Mega Man 2 in the mix? You'll get Commando Man's Commando Bomb from Mega Man 10. Mega Man 10's weapon selection is perfect. Well, Almost perfect. And while people say that weapons like the Triple Blade and the Water Shield are the best weapons in the game, I'll have to agree with CJS001 and say that the Commando Bomb you get from E123 Omega's Grass Color Cousin is the best. True, at first, this weapon may look like a reskin of the Crash Bomber, especially since it too can blow off walls. However, there are two differences between this and the Crash Bomber. One, it detonates the second it hits a wall, and two, 
Like the gyro attack, you can press either up or down on the D-pad and the commando bomb will fly either up or down depending which direction you press on the D-pad. Told you that Capcom made weapon similar to the gyro attack, unlike the gyro attack however, where you can only press the D-pad once with the commando bomb, after you press either up or down, you can press either left or right after that. So basically, the commando bomb is like an explosive version of the gyro attack, only more practical since so you can guide to your desired direction twice. Despite this, however, the main thing that makes this weapon my favorite in 10 is the explosion. As a bomb, it's pretty weak, but the explosion is very deadly. Like the gyro attack and tornado hole, it is a must for anyone who has trouble with hard to reach enemies, especially the keeper from Strike Man stage. Overall, even if you prefer other weapons in Mega Man 10, that still doesn't change the fact that the commando bomb is still a good weapon. Anyone who says otherwise will get blasted in the face! Oh come on, I had to say that! So, we have just taken care of a weapon from Mega Man 10, now it's time to take care of a weapon from the game before, Mega Man 9. While I don't regard this as the best game in the classic series like several Mega Man fans do, there's still quite a lot I enjoy about this game. The clean 8-bit graphics, the nice looking levels, the butt kicking soundtrack that Capcom games like this are known for, and a solid lineup of rebellious lightbots that gave us an equally solid lineup of weapons. Every weapon in this game does a solid job at taking down enemies. And while I was tempting to go with the Geo Satellite, especially since I got the Hard Rock achievement with it, instead, I am going with the first weapon I received in Mega Man 9, that being the Concrete Shot. Surprised? Yeah, I'll admit, I was skeptical about this weapon at first, but once I used it, I have no regrets. This weapon is honestly similar to the aforementioned Flame Blast. It's strong, and it goes in an arch. However, there are two things that make the Concrete Shot different than the Flame Blast, aside from the fact that it's an Earth Mover weapon and not a Fire weapon. When a concrete shot hits the ground, instead of leaving a pillar of flame that disappears in a nanosecond, it instead leaves behind a block that crumbles shortly, but you can use this block as extra footing. Think of this block of concrete like the ice wall is that much shorter, but still does a good job at getting you to hard to reach places, even if the rush coil is in this game. The second thing is that, unlike the flame blast or the geo satellite, the concrete shot, like several other weapons in 9, can be effective against environmental obstacles. Whether it's the thick lava jets in Magma Man stage or the lasers in stage 4 of Dr. Wily's castle. So considering the shot goes in an arc, doing the latter can be quite difficult, which is the reason why this weapon is not in the top 2. Still, the concrete shot is a very solid weapon. Yes, a very solid weapon from a very solid Royal Master. Concrete Man is actually my favorite Royal Master in Mega Man 9 to put it in layman's term. Mega Man 7 was the first main series Mega Man game to not use the 8-bit graphics that we all know and love and apparently, it got hate because of that. Personally, this is one of my favorite games in the series. The Royal Master lineup is solid, mostly. The weapons they give you are solid as well, mostly. As to which weapon from this game deserves to be on this list, well, I would have put the Junk Shield since it was the first shield based weapon that was actually good to most fans of the series, but unfortunately, as sturdy as it is, it can deflect projectiles. Even the plant barrier can. Don't get me wrong, the junk shield is still a fantastic weapon, but on the other hand, Shade Man's Noise Crush is even better. When you look at the name, you wouldn't expect a weapon based on sound to be effective on enemies even if the way Shade Man used to attack you does hurt. However, don't let the name deceive you. Despite being made out of sound energy, this weapon can still kill enemies because logic is not in the main man series dictionary. What do you do with this weapon? Just do what you always do when using any kind of special weapon in the Mega Man game. Press the fire button and watch it cause carnage. But what happens if you shoot the noise crush towards the wall? It bounces back into your body and your body will start to glow all the light is ready to fire a charge shot. And when you let go of the fire button again, a bigger and stronger noise crush will be fired. Like the other one, it can cause carnage. While this weapon may not be as strong as some of the other weapons you see on this list, the sheer creativity and enjoyment this weapon has is what it needed to earn a place on the number one spot. Or at least, it should have been on the number one spot, but then I played another Mega Man game last month. A Mega Man game with a weapon even better than this one. And since I'm giving every main series Mega Man game a shot here, you might know which game I'm talking about. I ain't going to say this right now. Mega Man 11 was completely unexpected, even when the year it was announced was also the Blue Bomber's 30th birthday. Nevertheless, Capcom still made it impossible possible. I'll go over my thoughts about this game in my next countdown. For this countdown, let's stay focused on the weapon. Honestly, Mega Man 11's selection of weapon is pretty much flawless. 
pretty much all the special weapons in this game are effective in some way, shape, or form. In fact, this selection of weapons is so awesome, half of them can penetrate metal helmets. What? As for which weapon will be on this list, I was thinking about the block dropper, but at the same time, Blockman's kinda my least favorite Roar Master in the game and he can't use his own weapon correctly outside of superhero mode. For anyone angry, don't worry, because I have this to chill you guys out. I'll admit, when your Mega Buster is replaced with what looks like an Ice Cream Maker, you wouldn't really expect much. However, don't judge the thunderstorm by what it did to your Mega Buster. While it did turn it into an Ice Cream Machine, this Ice Cream Machine can create a whirlwind of ice, as to why it's called the thunderstorm. Is it short range? Yes, but it can still cover like a quarter of the screen. Any enemy that touches this pillar of ice will get destroyed ASAP. Oh yeah, did I forget to mention this weapon is strong, just like pretty much every other special weapon presented on this list? Mega Man 11 introduced the Power Gear, which not only powers up your Mega Buster, but it can also make all of your special weapons stronger and different, very similar to the X Buster upgrades in the X series. When you use a thunderstorm with the Power Gear, it essentially becomes a screen nuke weapon, which granted is something special, but it's still one of the most effective screen nuke weapons we've got in Mega Man's history. True, you can only use it 7 times, but just because this weapon has limited use, doesn't mean it can't be useful. Okay, there are some cases where 7 use special weapons can't be useful, but it's useful here, dang it! The aforementioned flash topper wouldn't be on this list either if I had a problem with a weapon having limited use. Besides, the fact that a thunderstorm can still kill pretty much anything makes up for it, but I've established that before. And like 3 other weapons in Mega Man 11, the thunderstorm is effective against metal helmets. I don't think I have anything else to say. The Thunderstorm is my new favorite special weapon in the Mega Man series, hands down. It's funny that considering I filled this list with several ice-based weapons, it's only fitting I conclude this list with an ice-based weapon on number 1. I am Ron and came in with 5, and I finally managed to get my first positive countdown in a while done. For anyone wondering, I think the future of the Mega Man series is up to good old Capcom. Get up, get up, get out of here, gone. That guy is not coming back.